I've got that joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Down in my heart to stay. Let's talk about joy. <laughs> Hi, my name is Matt Marcoux, and this is Trail Mix with Pure Witness Ministries. Now, why is joy so important to the life of a Christian? In fact, why is it important to everyone's life, Christian or not? Because we're all seeking joy. Every person has a deep longing for joy. Why? Because, because our Creator placed that longing within us. Because he, he knew it would act like a homing beacon to help us find our way to Him. We all long for joy, but we struggle to find it. Why? Well, one reason is that sadly we all too often look for joy in all the wrong places. And the other reason is that we tend to make joy dependent upon the circumstances of our lives. But that can tend to make life just a cycle of highs and lows that wear us down physically, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, and ultimately leave us feeling empty and desiring something more. So how do we break this cycle and begin to lead lives that are more fulfilling, the kind of lives we were created for? We need, we need to refine our understanding of true joy, which will lead us to discover joy that is everlasting. I heard someone once say that an easy way to understand what real joy is, is to spell it out. J-O-Y. Jesus, others, you. And as I think about the order that leads to joy, it reminds me of the two greatest commandments. Jesus said to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus, others, you. And it's, it's right there. And it's amazing that the key to joy is to be found in the two greatest commandments as, as if God knew exactly what we need to become fulfilled in this life. So the first thing that we need to do to have everlasting joy is to love God above all else. In every aspect of our lives, he calls us to love him with our soul, the very essence of who we are, our, our mind. He wants us to love him with our thoughts, our intellect, our ability to think. He wants us to love him with our heart, our deepest emotions and the passions that, that drive us. And lastly, he wants us to love him with, with all our strength, with our physical bodies. As Catholics, this speaks deeply into the sacramental nature of our faith. Our bodies and how we use them counts. If we are loving God in all of these aspects of our lives, as we live out the fullness of what it is to be human, joy will find its way into our lives. We don't have to seek joy. We have to seek God and joy will find us. Joy, Jesus, others, you. So we've, we've covered Jesus. Let's, let's skip over others for now and go straight to you. I want you to ask yourself this question. Do I love myself? Now, that's a hard question. To love oneself can get confused with many things from taking care of one's basic needs, to self-indulgence, to asking ourselves, how could I ever love me as I focus on all my faults and failures? In the end, we miss out on what it truly means to love ourselves. To love myself authentically, I have to know who I am. I am a child of God, the son of a God who is love himself. That's where loving ourselves begins. Unfortunately, we tend to overlook that reality and just focus on our strengths and our faults. And, and the enemy gets in there and nudges us away from our identity with a loving Father God and makes us feel as though we are on our own. And that our identity is merely what we do. And that our sense of worth is measured against worldly success and failure. 
But this thinking is exactly what robs us of a life of joy. St. John Paul II was good at reminding us we are not the sum of our weakness and failures. We are the sum of the Father's love for us and our real capacity to become the image of his Son, Jesus. Made in the image and likeness of God, adopted sons and daughters of the King, our lives have an intrinsic worth and dignity. And if we build our sense of love, of self, on these realities, we will have joy and be equipped to then go out and love our neighbor as ourselves. So, we've covered Jesus and you. Now, we're on to others, our neighbors. Now, there are many ways to love our neighbor, but I want to suggest that the greatest way to love our neighbor is by drawing them to God, the source of of all love and joy and our true identity. We need to be the light of Christ in their their lives. We are living in such a fallen away world, a world that is lost in darkness. So how can we lead them out of the darkness to Jesus? Saint Mother Teresa of Calcutta put it this way, joy is the net by which we catch souls. It is our joy, our authentic joy, rooted in our authentic sense of who we are that is so attractive. We don't have to do much to bring joy to the world. We just have to be who we truly are and live our lives in a way that reveals we know we are sons and daughters of God. So go, live out these two greatest commandments with joy, Jesus, others, and you. I'm Matthew Marcoux, and this is Trail Mix with Pure Witness Ministries. See you in the next one. God bless.